So my name is Lo Tsai from Alibaba Database Group. So this paper is from the team is called Tear. It is also a product in Alibaba, which is a caching layer. And I represent uh, those authors to present this paper. The paper title is called Hot Ring, a Hotspots uh, Aware In-Memory Key Value Store. So as we all know, the in-memory uh, key value store already become very important components for all kinds of uh, internet uh, production system. And like Alibaba, we develop a tear and which is sitting between the storage layer like a database and the application so that they can cache the data to reduce the workload to the storage like a st uh, database and also give the application very fast uh, access uh, experience. And also Facebook, they use mem cache and all kinds of uh, tools. As in Alibaba, we figured out uh, a very uh, severe problem that is called hotspots. And even in those in-memory caching system, and for example, in the daily distribution, we've got uh, maybe 1% data, they will receive 50% access. However, in very severe situation, like we're doing some promotion, like uh, uh, W11 uh, festival, uh, a lot of hot data they will receive, for example, 1% data receive 90% accesses. And some very hot product like iPhone, right? And all kinds of, and if we only use uh, one node to cache those type of data, you can imagine those data or those nodes will receive a lot of pressure. And if those nodes couldn't handle this, they will pass this pressure to the storage like database uh, layer. And the database couldn't take it, and the whole system will crash. And we see such a uh, situation happen. And another issue is, in order to prevent, I have to deploy more resource to prevent this. So that becomes a cost issue. So we try a few ways to uh, mitigate this issue. For example, we can scale out. We do final partition. So uh, one node can take less workload. And uh, we also can re uh, replicate the data across multiple nodes. So all these nodes can take the workload. And however, that's also adds more resource and also add more cost to our system. And we also can cache all this data in the front end and now the client, uh, client side can immediately return the request. But however, if we have a lot of updates, we have to maintain all this consistency or coherency across all these clients when they cache all this data. And finally, we figure out maybe we need to improve the single node's ability. So that may better solve the whole problem. So, uh, so before we jump into our algorithm, I will introduce a little bit about uh, hash index. I think the uh, majority of people knows what it is, right? So we have a table, so we have all kinds of uh, a limited number of the buckets. And uh, for each bucket, it will point to a collision uh, chain. If we search an uh, item, and uh, we will look up this chain to find which item has the same case, and we find the item. And if not, then we miss, then we insert that item into this chain. And if and consider this type of algorithm, we can see it definitely does not optimize if we have data is good. That means we have a lot of hottest data. For example, in this case, we see item three that's uh, at the tail of the chain, right? We can see we need multiple memory access if those data are not cached in the CPU cache line. And we need to, for example, here we may make maybe four or five memory access to reach item three. And if item three is very hot, that means we spend a lot of memory access to those data. And I think that's the major problem we want to solve. We want to make it close to optimize. And we try to figure out uh, how much space we can gain, right? So it's a very straightforward idea is if we can uh, order these uh, items along this chain, based on their popularity, then definitely the main, the, then we can minimize the memory access to try to access all these items. Then we use some uh, modeling, for example, zip, then uh, uh, zip uh, function. We can model the access or the uh, popularity. We can draw the figure like the right side. And we can see along the, uh, the x-axis is the chain length. If we enlarge this uh, chain, or the collision chain, the definitely the memory access cost will become larger if we don't do anything, right? 
the, this uh, blue line uh, represents the ideal case. That means we always put the hottest item at the first and the second hottest uh, item at, at the second. This way you can see the cost will be much, much smaller, right? So that's how we can gain, I mean, our, uh, try to solve our problem by looking into this space. Of course, we also need to uh, solve the problem like if this hotspot shift, right, dynamic shift, how we ha online handle this. And if all this access become uh, concurrency, right, we need to handle that in the same ways. So here is our uh, algorithm. So the basic idea is we change this collision, uh, collision chain into a circular ring and uh, order the item on this ring and uh, make the bucket I mean, inside the hash table that pointer point to the hottest item. That's a very basic idea. If that hottest item change, then we change that head point. Basically, we don't want to change the collision chain. We don't want to change this ring, but we change the header point. That's the uh, basic idea. And then we need to solve all these problems. The first is uh, we need an uh, audit ring, so then uh, audit ring, so then we can determine uh, if we miss this search or we will hit this search, right? Then we also need to identify if we have some hotspots and why or when we should adjust it, this head point to point to the newer uh, hotspots. We also need to guarantee the log-free concurrent uh, operation, not only for those hashing table-related operations, we also need to uh, that for all this rehashing for those to move this uh, header point type of operation. And we also do the rehashing and based on this new design. So first is the, about the audit uh, audited ring. So uh, now we, because for original collision chain, we can naturally compare the key, right, to the tail. If the tail point to next point or point to none, we know that's end. But now we have the ring, and we don't know which is the end of the ring, right? So if we, every time we compare or try to uh, check if it's the end of the ring, then definitely that's not a cost efficiency. So that's why we try to order the ring, so then the comparison will be much easier, and once we uh, figure out the, the item in the ring is, for example, the previous one is smaller and the next one is larger, then definitely we know we will miss. For example, in this case is the item uh, B, right? We try to, now then we will try to insert this B between A and C. And here you can see we have two numbers in that paragraph. Uh, that's because we try to use uh, part of the hashing value we call tag and to uh, reduce the cost for the comparison. If this tag match, then we'll still uh, compare the key value. That's the second item in the uh, parentheses. So here we can see B actually we will miss, and for G and H, those items actually are the smallest or largest in this ring. And we also can handle those case to insert in, into the ring by comparing the tag or the key value with the, the, the existing items uh, key. So that's the orders. Oh. Now we talk about the most important part of the paper. I think it's uh, still very straightforward. So we have two strat uh, 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 strategy to do this uh, hotspots uh, identification and adjustment. The first is called random uh, movement. So the basic idea is after certain requests, for example, R requests, if the last one hits an item which is not original hottest one, then we will sweep, then we will change. We will change to this, the current one. So the, the algorithm is very simple, but I think it's very efficient, right? Once we have a dominant hottest item, you can imagine once we switch, then we will always hit that item. Then that's why we should move to that item, right? But of course, if we have some item which has maybe multiple hot items inside the ring, then you can see the problem is will be we will randomly move between those items. 
So that's why we try to use another more uh, accurate algorithm we call statistic sampling strategy. Uh, strategy. So the triggering part is the same. After our request, it will figure out something change. Then we'll start this sampling. And this sampling means we, I will start to record all the accesses uh, on all these items. We will utilize some existing data structure. We will not use extra uh, metadata. We will use some uh, extra bits inside those items pointer and try to uh, figure out which one gets most accesses. And then I do the calculation to decide where I should move the header it will be minimize the overall uh, cost. So that's two strategies. And of course, we want to support the uh, concurrent and log free, right? Because memcache edge is log based, and we want to make everything is log free. That's what we already did, I mean, in, in our production system. So here, we try to handle uh, two, two types of work and uh, workload. One is if the key size is small, for example, uh, smaller or equal to A bytes, then we can use compare and swap uh, instruction directly. And that's very straightforward. And if the key value, I mean the key size is larger, for example, 100 bytes, then we will use the RCU offered by Linux kernel to do that. Basically means we will make a copy before we do update, insert, or uh, update or delete. And however, we will see the issues if we have a concurrent update and update, update and insert, or update and delete. So that's why here we introduce an occupied bit to control that to serialize all these uh, operations so that there's no data corruption happens. So the detail inside the paper we can, but I think it's a very, it's, I think it's already uh, in other papers for those type of work. So it's listed here. And if we, if we got more and more items, so then the hash table need to be uh, enlarged. So we also introduce this uh, log-free uh, rehashing algorithm which is different from previous because now we have the ring and our criteria to uh, do the rehashing is originally the uh, algorithm was based on the length of the collision chain. Now we changing that to based on the uh, excess cost and to do this uh, rehashing. So basically we will introduce uh, a special node we call rehashing node. Its function is to try to divide the current uh, ring into two sub ring, and then we insert this uh, node into this uh, uh, ring, and you can see we have two headers, right? So during this, uh, during this time, initialization time and split time, every uh, workload still can be handled by the older, uh, older hash table. So the new hash table also can receive the workload, the old one also can receive the workload. So there's no uh, workload interruption. Later on, uh, later on, I will show some data about that. Now, after we do this, between we translate from this new, uh, the old one to the new one, then we need some transition period. So during this time, we will wait for all this old uh, hash table's workload to finish. Then we delete it and transfer all the workload to this uh, new uh, hash table. And uh, how we enlarge this hash table, I think is also, we just double it and use some special uh, uh, bit in the tag to try to point to those, uh, to, to, to decide which header we should use. I think that's the fundamental, um, it's, I think it's a basic uh, idea of that. So, okay. So now we have, I will talk about the uh, evaluation. So here, I think the very key point is this memory size. It's, we use 32 gigabytes. All this uh, algorithm we try, we use the same memory size because that's the key. Because for this uh, caching algorithm, if we change the memory size, I mean, the performance is totally different. So here, we, uh, I only show this uh, value size, I mean, the key value size is only eight bytes. And we also have the uh, evaluation about the larger uh, key size that's in the paper. So people, well, if you are interested, you can reference the paper. So the collision or the ring size is eight, and we also try the 64 uh, threads in parallel. The, uh, this zip theta is 1.22. That's 
almost represents like what I mentioned is 1% data will receive access, like 90% of the access. So we compare with a couple approach. One we call chaining hash, that's the modified version uh, of memcached. So memcached ori or originally is, uh, is log based, we change that to log free. We also compare with faster, it's uh, from uh, Microsoft, uh, it's also key value store. And MSG, that's a very uh, high performance uh, in memory uh, index, based on BJ and, and, and the chai, and also the original mem uh, cached. So here is a performance uh, comparison. The left side is about a single thread, and the right side is a 64 threads. You can see uh, both hot ring uh, random and hot ring sampling and outperforms others, especially uh, for the uh, y YCSB B and C. And it's um, uh, up to, I think, uh, two to three times faster. The reason is all other methods does not address this uh, hot item issue, and we did. And uh, that's, I think, the, especially when we see uh, because, we, we, because we use the data screw at this uh, 1.22 uh, situation. And we also can see uh, when we change it from single to uh, 64, and uh, the performance actually kind of skew. You can see uh, around single, single, no, single node, single thread, we have like uh, about uh, 10 to 15 million, uh, million operation per second, but for 64, we about like uh, 50, uh, close to uh, 600 uh, million op uh, operation, uh, million operation per second. So this number means, uh, if we do some calculation, you can see uh, for, 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 for average operation, the latency is only about 100 nanoseconds. That's about one or two memory excesses. That's the beauty of this algorithm. Basically, try to uh, approach the optimize the way. We also try if we have a different chain lengths and how the system work. And we can see the chain, uh, chain lens is 2, 4, and A16. Uh, our method all uh, out from others. And we also stay uh, more stable across the change of this uh, lens. And the right figure shows if we change the uh, schoolness of data. Of course, if the if data is not that good and we have similar performance as other approach, but if this uh, the the screwness become worse, then our method always uh, performs better. We also break down the uh, overall cost for every op operation. You can see why we can win is because we win when the the, the X time spent on those non header items. Here, non added item means we will access those items along the chain, not the first one, right? So you can imagine we always move, kind of move the hottest uh, item at the first. So, but other, uh, but other algorithms always have those hottest item in the, in the uh, chain, right? So they will spend more memory access for those items. And you can see those parts become a very large part uh, for the uh, operation's latency. And right figure shows how fast our algorithm can, uh, can reach the peak performance. For example, for this uh, hot ring random, it doesn't take uh, much time. It just immediately identify the hottest item and uh, reach the peak uh, performance. For this uh, sampling one, it will take uh, a few seconds and try to figure out uh, what's the best position for this header and finally exceed this, uh, this uh, random approach. And we also try to figure out what's the latency variation. And we do figure out, uh, we do find out that there's some tail latency. And it's much larger than other approach. But uh, majority is much smaller. And the reason we think is because when we do the sampling, and this point from this uh, hot ring sampling, this, when we do the sampling, we need to clean the counters. And during this time, we need some serialization. But this time is very short, so that's why it's only very small percent of excess get affected. 
and get a very, light, a very high latency. And right figure shows how we do the uh, rehashing. You can see uh, the rehashing, we, our performance does not drop to zero because we are doing online and uh, the, the rehashing. And, but still we have some performance dip, and this dip represents uh, the, we need some time to figure out what's the hot item. And after we figure out that, then our performance is just going back. So it's within a very short time, the performance drop, and after that, we immediately come back. So finally, we conclude uh, this presentation and paper. So our, uh, our method, uh, hot ring, actually is uh, optimized for massive concurrency workloads. And it can detect and adapt to the hot days. And we also uh, output, uh, outperform this other approach by a couple of times. So I think it's a very uh, good work. Yeah, thank you. How does this compare to the Kuko Hash? Uh, yeah, good question. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I especially ask also about this question. <laughs> yeah, so basically, uh, because uh, I think the one major thing is uh, in our product system, so we need the system can be dynamic change, right? Because we will receive a lot of requests and item will change, right? So we want this algorithm can be dynamic rehashing and with a very, very low overhead. I think a cuckoo hashing may uh, need more overhead to do this dyma uh, dynamic rehashing, so. Uh, so, mm. so the, ben the difference is basically the rehashing don't have cost, this, uh, I think, yeah. online expansion. Exactly. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Henry from Future Way. So when you do the uh, comparisons, uh, mm -hmm. have you normalized the other methods uh, to the same uh, memory footprint? Yeah, I, we do. That's why I mentioned at the very uh, beginning of okay. the evaluation part, everyone just only gets 32 gigabyte memory. Okay. So exactly the same. So. Hi. Uh, you mentioned that the algorithm you use is log-free. It does come with the extra overhead to maintain the log-free property, right? So did you consider a simpler log-based algorithm where you update the ring using logs rather than making it log-free? Uh, sorry, maybe I could, I missed you. So basically it's about a log? Uh, the lock. So lock. You, you, the algorithm you mentioned is log-free. Yeah, log-free, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. did you consider a log-based simpler algorithm? Uh, you mean? Be because log-free algorithms usually uh -huh. To provide the strong, uh, st the guarantees, it has to have extra overhead, yes. like the tag you mentioned, right? Yes. So, if you use the simpler logs, mm. sometimes it might give better performance. So, did you mm. consider implementing a log-based algorithm, something similar to memcached? Yeah, I I'm not sure, but I think memory cached already gave us example. Its performance is not good, right? So, it's log-based. So, but uh, so far we, that's why, for, like, I, like I mentioned, right, for the smaller key size, we just use uh, compressed web. I think it's, it's, it's more lower, uh, uh, I mean, the uh, tools to, to use, right, compared to lock. Of course, if we can, if, if, if our access behavior are, I mean, more complex, maybe uh, log type, like a spin log, right, uh, lightweight log should be used, but if for our this caching, right, it's like a caching you hit and uh, you miss, I think it may be log free will be better. So, okay. Yeah, thank you. No more question? Uh, then let's thank our speaker. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay.